This video is sponsored by tmaker.com Three days ago, I made a poll in my community section asking you guys what you want to see ranked the most in my first ever Battlecast tier list. Now out of the 1.1k subscribers we have right now, 161 have voted. Hopefully you're one of them because we are about to reveal the winner. Here we go guys. Okay, I'm gonna do it in the countdown of 3. Drum rolls please. 3, 2, 1. What do we have? Uber Air with 68%? Seems like you guys love Uber Air just as much as I do, huh? Wow, time to get started, shall we? Now this is the template I will be using for this tier list. Uh, it has all the Uber Res and Legend Res. Now I've found quite a few templates on the internet, but unfortunately some of them just don't include all of the units. So yeah, I had to spend a lot of time just dragging them around. So as you can see, all of the Uber Res are on top and all of the event units which I have no idea about are at the bottom. Alright, I think we're ready to get started, but before we begin, I'd like to introduce to you my modified tier list. So at the top we have uh, the wheelchair rank, which you will see what it means in a second. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory anyway. Here we have the SSS. Now SSS is just as good as wheelchair, except these units are broken, but they take a lot of skill to use. Then we have the standard S, A, B, C, D tiers. Uh, I won't have an E tier because I believe every Uber serves in purpose. But of course, there are some that just belong in the main tier. So yes, those are all the tiers in my tier list. Now I will say that because this is a 1k special, it's not gonna be a 100% in-depth serious analysis, okay? I don't even have like half of these Ubers. For the Ubers I have, I will be able to give a pretty good ranking, but for the Ubers I don't have, I'll just have to give a ranking based on their stats. But I reckon I have a pretty good understanding of most of these Ubers. So yeah, feel free to disagree. Now unlike most other rankings, this tier list will be based on their specific niche. I mean let's be real, why would you use a unit like Mighty Aether LTD against non-zombies? Like, you just wouldn't do it, right? So I wouldn't put it in the C tier just because it's terrible on its own against non-zombies. But for units without a very good niche, they will be ranked of course on the generalist usage. Alright, let's start ranking. Now first we have Air. Air is a long-ranged barrier breaker. And his niche is just completely outclassed by many other units in the game. I mean, every other pixie has 100% barrier break, and Kitty of Liberty from the super rare section also has 100% barrier break. As you can see, there's just not much usage for him. On to our next unit, Akira. Uh, Akira belongs in the B tier in my opinion, but with talents unlocked, he's very well in the A tier. Now the reason why he is in B tier by himself is because, well, He's strong against aliens, coupled with his sub 5k DPS, really is just quite underwhelming. His main usage is of course to freeze the aliens, but for freeze we have units like Gigavolta and yeah, he is just not quite A tier yet. Now we're on to Amakusa. Now Amakusa got his true form recently, uh, he has massive damage versus Aku enemies as well as black enemies. But you see, he has a very fatal multi-hit that spreads his damage around. So, um, hmm. Against tanky enemies, he is a beast. Let's say you have the Behemoth and Shiro Amakusa is well protected. Then of course, he does insane amounts of DPS. But against most enemies, his multi-hit will reduce his DPS drastically, so the massive damage is practically not there. Yeah, unfortunately I have to give it a B. Okay, now we're getting on to some very good units. Now Amaterasu absolutely belongs at the top of the S tier. I won't put her at the SSS tier just because she's like my golden standard for good units. 
Yeah, my standards for good rubers is quite high, guys. So yeah, a Matarasu is an absolute beast of a generalist. Massive damage versus all traded, and she has a very good zombie killer talent. One of the best generalists in the game. Hey, look who it is. It's Anubis, my good old friend. Now, Anubis is my first ever Uber, and I would put him in the B tier. Now, before you all rush into the comment section and say, no, Anubis is trash, he should belong in the C tier, I should tell you that he's actually a pretty good anti wave and surge generalist, if used properly. Now, I know he has a 3 second force swing, which is absolutely terrible, but hey, he has almost 7k DPS with both immunity to wave and the surge and he has a 30% chance to create his own surge after talent unlock. Now he also has zombie killer. Despite being one of the worst almighties, he is still a pretty underrated unit in my opinion. But the reality is that no one would ever invest into Anubis simply because there are better options available. So yeah, he'll be at the end of the B tier. Now we have Aphrodite. Now Aphrodite, you have to go into the SSS tier. I mean come on, she has an unbeatable niche. Now for those of you new to the game, Afro has only 3k base DPS and only surface. It looks pretty underwhelming, right? But that is until you see that she has massive damage versus aliens. Now there are a lot of alien backliners, so that niche is a perfect counter. I'm telling you. She is one of the best snipers in the game. By sniper, I mean super backliner. However you wish to call her. So yeah, ooh, now we have... Now I'm thinking whether to put it in the D tier or the mean tier. For now I'll leave it in the mean tier. I mean, this guy, his face. Yeah, that says everything right there. Ooh, Balrog. Now I think Balrog belongs in the wheelchair section. Because, come on, he's Balrog. One hit kills pretty much like all the enemies in the game. Except for the bosses which can tank a few hits. I highly suggest you to put all your MPs into Balrog if you have him. Because his strength and talent is ridiculous. Now this guy does over 300,000 damage per hit. With talents of course. So yeah, look up his stats if you want to. He's single target, but he's an absolute beast. Next up we have Bora. Bora is a very solid A tier. Now the only reason I wouldn't put him into the S tier because his generalist usage is definitely below, definitely below a Matarasu's. This unit is very cracked in Into the Future and Cast of the Cosmos. One of the best anti-aliens in the game, but you see, his journalist usage just kind of falls off. Besides, he has a very long force swing. So, uh, he either belongs at the very front of A tier or at the very end of S tier. Personally, I will put him in the A tier. Now, I don't know why you are there. I don't think you're one of the normal, normal Ubers, are you? Hmm, how did you make it into the top? Here we have Mighty Bomber. Now, Bomber is a unit with a 100% knockback versus zombies. That is all. Um, he's pretty useful against Big Pain Z, but that's about it. So yeah, he belongs in the B tier. Cat Clan Heroes, he is a good support against Relic enemies. Uh, he's able to weaken them to 50% for 5 seconds every 9 seconds. But the range is a little short and the duration isn't as optimal as I want it to be. So uh, pretty good support unit. I would still put him in a B tier. Despite him having 4 targets which is quite ridiculous. Okay, Cat Machine. Now Cat Machine is a pretty good unit. He is a disposable tank. Uh, he has wave shield which is very useful. Great tank, great DPS, even has a freeze talent. Now the freeze talent is quite OP. He can completely stop rushes like Nemoi Ball and just a regular ball. He targets red and aliens I believe. 
and overall he's just a very good tank unit. Here we have Dreadnought, one of the very few units with the Soul Strike ability. I think he goes at the very front of the B tier. Now in terms of generalist usage, this unit is decent with his DPS, but quite slow. He has a really slow attack frequency, about once every 10 seconds. And he has a pretty long force swing, just like Anubis. 3 seconds. I mean, he has 440 range, so he can probably afford that long force swing. But other than that, it's just an okay generalist. Next up, we have Kamen. Now, Kamen obviously belongs in the S tier when used against his niches. He will absolutely carry any of you who get his true form through Uncanny Legends. Cause he has massive damage versus relics and a pretty good range targets two traits I believe. Yeah, he's just a very solid unit. Ooh, cats in the cradle. I think he belongs also in the A tier. Now similar to Cat Machine, uh baby cats or cats in the cradle is a disposable tank. The DPS isn't as good as Cat Machine and the debuffs aren't as good as Cat Machines. So yeah, and he doesn't have resistance versus any trace but rather knock back and slow if talents are unlocked. So yeah, he belongs at the very end of the A tier. Kaguya is garbage, however her seasonal counterpart is pretty good. That much I gotta say about Kaguya. Kronos, another SSS tier. She freezes all traits. I mean, what else do I need to say? Copper Mine with her 75% freeze duration. Oh, I don't know about this one, man. She's really not that great outside of her floating freeze niche, which she doesn't even do with 100% proc rate. I would say she's in the C tier. And now we're on to. Oh, we're onto a lot of really broken units. First up, we have Dark Tanyan. Now, Dark Tanyan is in every one of my Russia lineups. Uh, I'm wondering if I should put him in the wheelchair or the SSS section. Now, deploying Dark Tanyan does take a bit of skill, so I think I'll put him in the SSS section. Doesn't mean that he's any worse than Balrog. I mean, we all know how broken Dark Tanyan is. It's just that. You can't just win the game by deploying him, cause he does have a blind spot. But other than that, absolutely broken generalist, even more broken on trailers. He just absolutely dominates trailers enemies. On the other hand, his counterpart, D'Artagnan. Mm, I think D'Artagnan belongs in the S tier, between a Matarasu and Catman. Now the reason is because, although he is quite broken, and works similar to Dark Tanyan, he has less health, less overall DPS against his traits, and Amaterasu just does a better job at both surviving and dealing consistent DPS. So yeah, sorry Dark Tanyan fans, he belongs only in the S tier. Next up we have Daru. Now, we could very well chuck Daru into the B or even C tier because why would you use Daru? Now I say Daru belongs in the A tier because he can carry you through pretty much every single main cat stage. If we're just talking about trailers here, he very well goes into the wheelchair section because by spawning him, you pretty much do not need to worry about trailers enemies anymore. But of course here we're talking about every single stage in the game. So yeah, he belongs in the A section. I mean, he does good DPS overall. He has strengthened at 50% HP, which brings his DPS above 10k. And that is not too shabby. Oh, next up, we have the main unit of the game. I mean, do I even need to say more? She is like the face of the game right now. Darsley, the dream of every Battlecast player that doesn't have her yet. After getting her, your life will be changed forever. It is that one unit which just transcends your entire gameplay experience. Now, I don't have the confidence like someone to say that she is mediocre after her release, but 
Personally, I think Darcy is pretty cool and she belongs in a wheelchair section because of how overpowered she is. I mean, there's a reason why most people ranked her as the single most powerful unit in the game, right? So yeah, OP girl Darsley belongs right in the wheelchair section. Next up, we have Wolf Child Dio. Now, she has pretty decent DPS, slightly above the par. Uh, she has also knockback versus two traits. Uh, I would put her at the very front of B tier. Now, if you have no better Ubers to deal damage, she is the way to go. Especially on stages like Crazed Tank, she can be a pretty useful asset in the early game. Now we're seeing some Dragon Emperors. We have Doramos here with his anti-angel abilities. Now a thing about all of the Dragon Emperors is that they are all extremely expensive. Now cost is a big factor in this game. Now if you can't deploy a unit fast enough, the unit will probably never be deployed. So yeah, um, because of the massive cost and underwhelming DPS, I will probably put him at the front of the C tier. Ooh, Dr. Clay. Now this is a very special unit because all three forms have different purposes. First form has Base Destroyer, which does an amazing 50k DPS to bases. Second form has two targets, Attacks only Angel and Aliens, a uh, great DPS overall. Third form only targets Aliens, but has 20k DPS. So yeah, depending on how you use him, he can be really overpowered or really underpowered. Ooh, actually I'll put him in the A tier just because of how similar he is to Garu. Yeah, I mean both of them are very situational. Also, when I said Garu, I meant Daru, sorry about that. E Kubilan. I'm really tempted to put him in the meme tier. I mean, it's not that bad to be in the meme tier, right? Yeah, I mean, it's got no usage other than to kill Metal Cory. Yeah, I'm sorry. I feel like most of the Neko Lucas will be in the meme tier. They excel at looking scary, okay? That is the only thing they're good at. Ooh, we have Turtle. Now, Turtle is a tank. Uh, I believe he belongs at the very end of A tier because he has some range. Now, it can be difficult to work with a ranged tanker, but he does have ridiculous amounts of health against angels. So, yeah. Next up, we have Ganesha. Ganesha is very good, S tier. Now, on my friend's account, I used Ganesha to defeat Cappy Jr. Because while well, we lacked Dark Tanyan, and Ganesha did a really good job replacing Dark Tanyan. I mean, the 150% strengthen in true form with talent unlock brings his DPS to around 15k if I remember correctly. It's just a very powerful overall generalist. Now he does have long range, which means his range extends to even backliners, which makes him even more powerful. Oh, so yeah, I'm probably putting him right after Matarasu. Very good unit. It is the unit that benefits the most from the true form out of all the Mighties, I believe. Right after Hades, who uh, has extreme amounts of health, and we're gonna rank him in just a minute. Oh, Ganglion. Now, Ganglion is without a doubt one of the better Dragon Emperors. Uh, this is gonna be a bit controversial, but personally, I don't think Ganglion is as good as he sounds to be. Uh, he has 300 range, 7.5k DPS against aliens and zombies. Uh, his actual DPS will be a bit higher because he has rebound, so every time he gets knocked back, he attacks again. Uh, he also has a wrong range. But overall, he doesn't do as much damage as I expect him to. I mean, he's kind of like a rusher. Yeah, this is kind of a tough one. Because Ganglion has no debuffs whatsoever against his targets. So yeah, he'll be right after Bora. When Ganglion gets his talents, then he'll probably be in the S tier. Okay, for now he stays in the A tier. Oh, now I have two more Uberfest exclusives. 
Now, Gao is a very solid generalist, but unfortunately, for my personal standards, his DPS is a little low. Now, of course, I use him all the time if I fail on magma tunnel stages. There are just some stages where range is the key factor. Of course, you trade for damage, and Gal does not have a lot of damage. He is strong against or traded. He has around 9k DPS. But yeah, overall, very good generalist. Uh, right after Matarasu, I say Matarasu is a bit better. So yeah, there is Gal. Now next up we have Garu. Now, Garu, in my personal opinion, is better than Daru. I say right after Ganglion. Now the reason why he's there is because, well, he's kind of a wheelchair for advanced stages. After you clear all the peon waves, you kind of just spawn Garu and Garu will just take care of the rest. At level 30, he has almost 600k health against traded enemies. Yeah, that's all I gotta say about this unit. Talk shit about Garu if you want to, but he's right in the A tier for me. At the front as well. Gladios. Why do you even exist, Gladios? Uh, this is probably one of the first units I'll put in the D tier. I mean, he goes so well into the D tier. Like, why would anyone spend 5.6k just to get a lump of meat? Sorry, Gladios. You're just completely out of the meta. Next up, we have Fury Luga. Now, Fury Luga has a very long range, 100% shield piercing. Now, shield piercing is one of the rare niches in this game, but despite the 100% shield piercing, at a ridiculous 800 range, Fury Luga attacks every 20 seconds, which, yeah, really well balanced unit I guess. This unit is completely useless as a generalist, so I'll put him in the C tier. Oh, Dark Mitama. Now I got a personal request saying that Dark Mitama should be in the SSS tier because it's Dark Mitama. Uh, for those of you new to the game, Dark Metama is like the ultimate traitorless debuffer. Um, as a generalist, she is probably in the B or C tier. But you see, we're talking about the niches here. So yeah, she is wheelchair. There we go. She absolutely dominates traitorless enemies and you can't really disagree to that. Right, now we're up to Gravadon. Now this is a pretty good unit as well. He sits right behind Bora. Now, Gravolodon is a very good alien tanker slash barrier breaker. Now, earlier I said that S niche is completely outclassed by many other units. Gravolodon has a level 4 wave with barrier breaking. Ooh! Big boy Hades. Hades goes right into the S tier. Like, the amount of health he had? I don't think I need to explain that. I'll just put him there for now. He's a very solid choice for S tier. He's definitely not near the end of the S tier queue. Hayabusa. Now, Hayabusa is a very, very cracked anti metal. Okay, what you're seeing here is his true form, which has debuffs against zombies, which is obviously not as useful as the first form. Neither is the evolved form, which does the same thing except to aliens. Now, the first form has a 33% chance to crit and the crit is massive okay to give you an idea he can kill the metal cyclone in just two hits 77,777 hp gone in two crits that is Hayabusa one of the best anti-metal critters in the game Alright, that is it for today. Uh, we still got a massive list of Ubers remaining. Now, I don't want to turn this into a one hour ranking documentary for you guys. So, uh, there will be a part 2 and probably a part 3 to this. If you want me to rank other rarities, just drop a comment in the comment section below. And I will do them after the Uber tier list. So, so far we've ranked 37 Ubers and it seems like there are about 70 of them left still. Ooh. 
And there's one more thing I'd like to mention right before I end the video. Tier Maker stuff. If you see this video somehow, please add the feature to let users edit existing templates. You have no idea how much pain I've gone through just rearranging these cards. And guess what? When I close my Chrome tab, all of this gets messed up. Okay, all of these event units go back up the top and all of them get jumbled up. It's just not a pleasant experience creating tier lists with templates that don't exactly fit your needs. So yeah, that is all for today. Thanks for 1k subs everybody, and see you in the next video. At level 30, he has 600k DPS. 600k DPS? NANI?!